In Nevada, there used to be a current story of an adventure or two of, the, of her nabobs, which may or may not have occurred. I give it for what it's worth. Colonel Jim had seen somewhat of the world and knew more or less of its ways, but Colonel Jack was from the back settlements of the states, had led a life of an arduous toil, and had never seen a city. These two, blessed with sudden wealth, projected a visit to New York. Colonel Jack to see the sights, and Colonel Jim to guard his unsophistication from misfortune. They reached San Francisco in the night and sailed in the morning. Arrived in New York, Colonel Jack said, I've heard tell of carriages all my life, and now I mean to have a ride in one. I don't care what it costs. Come along. They stepped out on the sidewalk, and Colonel Jim called a stylish baroche but Colonel Jack said, No, sir, none of your cheap John turnouts for me. I'm here to have a good time, and money ain't any object. I mean to have the knobbiest rig that's going. Now here comes the very trick. Stop that yaller one with the pictures on it. Don't you fret. I'll stand all the expenses myself. So Colonel Jim stopped an empty omnibus, and they got in. Said Colonel Jack, Ain't it gay, though? Oh no, I reckon not. Cushions and windows and pictures till you can't rest. What would the boys say if they see us cutting a swell like this in New York? By George, I wish they could see us. Then he put his head out the window and shouted to the driver, Say, Johnny, this suits me. Suits yours truly. You bet you. I want this shebang all day. I'm on it, old man. Let him out. Make him go. We'll make it all right with you, Sonny. The driver passed his hand through the strap hole and tapped for his fare. It was before the gongs came into common use. Colonel Jack took the hand, shook it cordially, and he said, You twig me, old pard. All right, between gents. Smell that, and then see how you like it. And he put a $20 gold piece in the driver's hand. After a moment, the driver said he could not make change. Bother the change. Write it out. Put it in your pocket. Then to Colonel Jim, with a sounding slap on his thigh, ain't it style, though? Hanged if I don't hire this thing every day for a week. The omnibus stopped, and a young lady got in. Colonel Jack stared a moment, then nudged Colonel Jim with his elbow. Don't say a word, he whispered. Let her ride if she wants to. Gracious, there's room enough. The young lady got out her portemonnaie and handed her fare to Colonel Jack. What's this for, said he. Give it to the driver, please. Take back your money, madam. We can't allow it. You're welcome to ride here as long as you please. But this shebang's chartered, and we can't let you pay a cent. The girl shrunk into a corner, bewildered. An old lady with a basket climbed in and proffered her fare. Excuse me, said Colonel Jack. You're perfectly welcome here, madam, but we can't allow you to pay. Set right down there, mum, and don't you be the least uneasy make yourself as free as you was in your own turnout within two minutes three gentlemen two fat women and a couple of children entered come right along friends said Colonel Jack don't mind us this is a free blowout then he whispered to Colonel Jim New York ain't no sociable place I don't reckon it ain't no name for it he resisted every effort to pass fares to the driver and made everybody cordially welcome. The situation dawned on the people, and they pocketed their money and delivered themselves up to covert enjoyment of the episode. Half a dozen more passengers entered. Oh, there's plenty of room, said Colonel Jack. Walk right in and make yourself at home. A blowout ain't worth anything as a blowout unless a body has company. Then in a whisper to Colonel Jim, but ain't these New Yorkers friendly? And ain't they cool about it, too? Icebergs ain't anywhere. I reckon they tackle a hearse that was going their way. More passengers got in. More yet, and still more. Both seats were filled, and a file of men were standing up holding on to the cleats overhead. Parties with baskets and bundles were climbing up on the roof. Half-suppressed laughter rippled from all sides. Well, for clean, cool, out-and-out -out cheek, if this don't bang anything I ever saw, I'm an Injun, whispered Colonel Jack. A Chinaman crowded his way in. I weakened, said Colonel Jack. Hold on, driver. 
Keep your seats, ladies and gents. Just make yourselves free. Everything's paid for. Driver, rustle these folks around as long as they're mine to go. Friends of ours, you know. Take them everywheres, and if you want more money, come to the St. Nicholas, and we'll make it all right. Pleasant journey to you, ladies and gents. Just go along as long as you please. It, ain't, it shan't cost you a cent. The two comrades got out, and Colonel Jack said, Jimmy, it's the sociablest place I ever saw. The Chinaman waltzed in as comfortable as anybody. If we'd stayed a while, I reckon we'd had some niggers. By George, we'll have a barricade our doors tonight. Some of those ducks will be trying to sleep with us.